topic. So, hello, 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 everybody. I am Chrissy Phipps. For those of you who know me already, then you know what I do for a living. I'm a retired full-time mom, full-time trader, full-time investor, full-time team builder, right? And listen, I just want to share a little bit with you guys because my team and I have been having some deep conversations about success in creating success. And I want to make sure that all of you have access to some of the information and things that we found, okay? So I did go ahead and drop the links in the chat. Um, let me share my screen. So this is the document that I was talking about on the live earlier. And this is a conversation that we kind of need to have. Like, you just need to be honest with yourself. Um, having goals matters. But how you're trending towards those goals matters more, okay? This document was put together specifically to help you track your progress, track your goals, um, and kind of give yourself a roadmap to success. So um, a lot of the things that a lot of people don't think about when they're thinking about success is why are you doing the things that you're doing? What is your why? What is the reason, right? And for a lot of people inside of what I do, the reason that they want to trade is so that they can be financially independent, right? But your goal sometimes is a little bit more deep than that. Honestly, mine was arrogant. Mine was extremely arrogant in the beginning. And over time, it did change. My goal for, for the reason why I wanted to learn to trade and be consistently profitable and be successful at it was because I hated my job so much. I wanted to prove everybody who didn't believe in like my next step, wrong. Everybody, friends, family, whatever. That was my goal in the beginning, right? And it did change over time. Like after a while, I wanted to learn how to trade so that I could share this information with my son. My son, he said when he was little, he wanted to be a botanist and that's dope, right? But if he gets halfway through those courses and he decides that that's not what he wants to do, I don't want him to be in a situation where he has to figure it out. I want him to be in a situation where he can take a break if he wants to and do something different with his life or make a different decision, go down a different road, right? So my why is a little bit different now. Um, in addition to helping my son and making sure that he's good, I actually want to retire 100 people a year. So I had to learn to do this so that I could share it with other people so I could speak intelligently about what I do, right? So that's my goal now. My why has evolved quite a bit over time from being like spiteful and arrogant to like actually genuinely wanting to help people. So that's part of the reason why I put together this Zoom is because I genuinely want to help people. I genuinely want to see people succeed um, because seeing other people succeed and knowing that I had a little bit of a hand and it actually brings me joy. It makes me very happy to see people's success and be able to celebrate that with them. So that, that's kind of the evolution of my why, right? But in my evolution, right, what is it that, that accomplishing that goal is going to do, right? So if one of your like self-fulfilling prophecies is that you want to do X, Y, Z, that's your, your why you're accomplishing the goal. That's the deeper reason. That's what happens after you've accomplished the goal. That's what the next step is right? So for me, the next step is just being in a place where I'm surrounded by people who are successful, no matter what, right? Like, period. I, I enjoy seeing people win, no matter what it is in life. Like, I know people who have t-shirt businesses. I know people who have bakeries. One of my friends actually has a vegan and vegetarian cafe, and I absolutely love to see their success and see how they celebrate their successes. Like I said, seeing other people win brings me joy. So that's what learning how to trade and doing everything that I've been doing is helping me to accomplish. That's my long-term, right? It's just see, being in a joyful, abundant place surrounded by the people that I've actually helped to fulfill their dreams. And that, that makes me very happy, right? So in, in the back of all of your goals, there is a monetary attachment. I don't think I've ever run across a person. And, and if I'm wrong, let me know. But I don't think that I've ever run across a person 
whose goal does not involve money in some way, shape, or form, okay? I want to open up a restaurant, and that takes money, right? I want to be able to donate to some of the chair. Like, I love donating to Susan G. Coleman for breast cancer. Love donating to them. I do it every year, but I want to be able to donate more, right? I love um, donating to St. Jude's Children's Hospital because I love what they do for the families and for the children who are going through chemotherapy and stuff like that, like babies, little people going through such a traumatic experience. I love what they do and how they kind of ease that burden, how none of the children who have to go to those hospitals and have that treatment ever gets a doctor's bill. I love that. And I want to support that, right? So there's a monetary goal that I have and I need to hit it in order to see some of these, these prophecies come to fruition, right? So let's say at the end of the day, your monthly goal to, to start out because your goals grow, your ambitions grow, these things change, they will evolve. So let's just say in the beginning, you started out at $10,000 a month, right? As your goal. But yeah, now you know what, what you think you want monthly, but let's let's take a look and see if that's actually attainable or see if it's actually feasible, right? You have to start looking at all of the numbers, not just a few of the numbers, right? So what are your total expenses? Okay, and I wanna hop over here for a second. This website, this app is phenomenal. Okay, so under how it works, right? There's a bill payment tracker to help you keep track of your bills when you need to pay your bills, like the percentage that you're paying your bills on time. There's a budgeting section in this app. They give you your credit score for free in this app. They send you push notifications and alerts to your phone. You can even create additional categories for budgeting. Like if you want to save for a big ticket item, you want to buy a car, you can create a budget category for that and start to drip money into it. And it's going to keep track of that for you, right? I love that, okay? There's an investment section in this app. I still invest in stocks outside of cryptocurrencies and things like that. It keeps track of my other investments for me as well and your securities, okay? So this app, I absolutely love, um, I am a very big proponent in it and I'll be very transparent with you guys. I am a very, very big proponent of tearing my credit score to the ground every few years and then building it back up to like 730 is usually where I get 730, 750, somewhere around here. And the reason why I'm okay with doing that is partially because of this app. Because I can keep track of everything like when I tear it down, all it is is just overutilization of your credit, right? If you use more than 30%, they're like, oh my God, you're using too much of your own money. And it's a thing for me. I don't like that. So if there's a big ticket thing, I want to run credit on y'all gave me credit, so I'm going to use it. And that, that bites you in the butt sometimes. But if you know how to maneuver inside of the credit space and you have something to help you keep track of everything financial in your life. And you can even set financial goals on this app. So I love it. I want to share it with you guys. So go ahead and like create an account on here for free. Um, for those of you who are not in the academy and you know nothing about Proton Mail, do me a favor and create a Proton Mail email first. ProtonMail.com. Okay. So this is the world's most secure email in the world, okay? Yep, I said the world twice. Um, but this is encrypted email. They don't share your information. They don't sell your information. It is secure. Hackers cannot get into it. Hackers can get into your Google. They can get into your Yahoo. They can get into your Hotmail, right? So set up a ProTimeMail account first and then start to change your backup email or your primary email for your finances over to your Proton Mail. Thank me later because a lot of different things are happening inside of the, the world of technology because of the advancements in cryptocurrency and things like that. And it's allowing for hackers and people who want to do nefarious things to hardworking people and steal their money 
they're they're making it easier for them. So your job is to make it hard to keep people out your pocket, okay? So after you have created um, your Proton Mail account, go over to Mint and create your Mint account. Go ahead and set everything up. There is like a little section. Let me see. I tried to start like a demo for you guys. Um, but there's a section in here that lets you connect all of your banks, even Acorn, even Robinhood even your PayPal, okay, right? Even, where is it at? Even your Venmo, it's just, it's one little net. Even your Venmo, right? Um, if you guys are doing like securities on E-Trade, it's here. Um, Fidelity is here and that's who I use for my stock, right? So go ahead and plug in. Make sure you take the time though um, to fill out everything in its entirety it's going to benefit you in the long run to take just this, this one opportunity. And I'm not saying that you're going to have one. What I'm saying is make this the opportunity that you take, right, to actually take a deep dive into your finances and actually go through and create the accounts, write things down. Like I have a little password book. I write down all my usernames and passwords. Do not commit them to memory. Write them down. OK, but take the time to fill out everything that you can think of for the questions when you go through creating your account. It's going to help you so much. That's part of the reason why I don't care about credit, because I can see my credit, track it, monitor it, build it and burn it down as frequently as I want to. Right. So um, moving back over to the document, I need you guys to do me a favor. If, if like go ahead and fill this out. At the top, there's a little thing that says, go ahead and hit file and make a copy, right? And then once you make a copy, you can edit it, okay? And I need you to go through and fill it out. Be honest with yourself. I'm not asking you to share this with me or anybody else, right? If you and your significant other don't talk about finances as deep as I'm asking you to die, don't share it. What I'm telling you is though, be honest with yourself. OK, because that honesty is going to help you in the long run. OK, like I said, there's nothing that I've run across in this world that doesn't require a couple bucks. OK, so fill it out. Everything. And I left some categories down here for you to add um, any additions that I may have forgot. If you right click and click insert row below, you can add as many as you want to, as many different categories as you want to. Um, and this everything, all of your expenses, anything that you have in your expenses, if you have credit card bills, you can like lump them up as one or write them out separately because one of the things that I do is I pay off my credit cards one by one. So instead of credit cards, you might have three, put all three of them here, which account it is, right? How much money, right? That you pay monthly, write out these expenses, okay? And the example that I give um, is if you work 40 hours a week and you bring home $3,000 a month, you still need to generate an additional $7,000 in income, okay? So up here at the top, let's say we fill this out and we're at $2,500 overall, but we're bringing home $3,000. That leaves us with $500 to go ahead and divvy up the way that we want to. And I'm not going to say, don't put a category in here for you to treat yourself. You should definitely do that. But while you're working on some of your goals, your treats might be smaller now than they're going to be later after you hit some of those major milestones that you set, okay? So the, the, for you to hit your goal, it's like 10,000 minus 3,000 equals 7,000. That's how we got that number. So let's say um, for what we do, those of you who understand what we do, um, let's say you hit platinum 1,000, right? Now you have an additional $1,000 coming in. So then you're going to keep track of that as well. So you're going to add on to that number that we had before, right? Or actually subtract from it. Now we don't need $7,000 a month. Now we only need six, right? And that's, that's incoming and outgoing all together. We are left with a total of $6,000 a month that we need to hit our income goal of $10,000, right? 
And at this goal sheet, just understand that keeping track of your income and expenses is so that you can achieve your goals. You want to keep track of the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Numbers help you understand your progress. Numbers let you see the things that you might miss. They let you see the areas of opportunity that you have. So write down all of your bills, even the ones that you don't currently pay, but you know you need to, right? For like a year in the beginning of all of this, I had a, an outstanding loan that I just refused to pay on because I was like, I got 50 other things to do. When I pay off something else, I'll pay that off next. Listen, write down everything. Don't forget anything, okay? If you have stuff on your TRW or your credit report that you want to get off, you know what the balances are. Put that in here, write it down so that when you figure out what your overall goal is, you can start to truly have, like I said, that $10,000 a month goal instead of having $7,000 because you forgot about the other $3,000 worth of stuff that might be coming out of your taxes later, right? Write everything down. Be honest with yourself, please, right? And what do you make right now? Subtract that from the 10 k right? What income streams do you have? Subtract that from the 10K. It's one net. I swear I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay. Um, right. So subtract all of that from the 10K, right? Use the chart below to keep track of your progress, right? So this is your income. We have expenses up here, your outgoing expenses and the total for everything. And then let's, let's track your income. Okay. So what's your salary or how much are you making monthly? What side gigs do you have? right? I know people who design t-shirts, like I said, and do like dinner orders. What are you doing outside of your regular job to bring in additional income, right? Do you want that goal to be bigger or smaller? For me, with this category, my salary position was actually, my goal was zero here, okay? And my goal was zero here because I wanted to retire, so I had to put a zero here and had my current amount here and I had to subtract that, okay? But what are all of your side gigs? If you're inside of what we do, what rank are you at currently, right? Are you platinum 150? Are you platinum 600? You have that additional money coming in, right? What's your goal? If your goal is P5000, right? You can subtract that from that 10, but you need to keep track of your current amount. Your goal could be P5000. But right now you're sitting at P600. There's a bit of a discrepancy there. Write down the difference, right? If you're trading foreign exchange, high frequency or like digital currency, or you have an e-store, what's your monthly goal for each of those? Because we don't, I don't have one trading account. I have two trading accounts for foreign exchange, two trading accounts for HFX, one e-store, and then I have, um, a crypto portfolio with about 90 different assets in it. And I trade cryptocurrency in two different crypto accounts as well. So I have to add in extra categories when I do this, right? Because although I do have a fun account that I really just like to click buttons in for trading Forex, right? I still have a goal to bring in a certain, at least $100 a month in that account. And I started out like $50 every month and I withdraw every month from it. And it's kind of fun because I like to shop. So it comes in handy, right? Um, what, what other things are you doing? Do you invest in cryptocurrency? Are you staking? Do you have any like cryptocurrencies or stocks that pay you dividends? Were you getting money coming in? Are you mining any cryptocurrency, right? Because those of us on the team who mine cryptocurrency, we have an average coming into our home from what we are mining right? If you are inside of the iHub so that you can mine with us, what goal do you have there? Because that's an additional stream of income. Do you have any investment properties, right? What is it that you, that you have that's bringing money into your home, okay? So go ahead and fill that out. Like I said, be honest. And then you have steps to achieve your goal, define what your goal is, measure it, and then track it, okay? And do me a favor, you might want to make a copy of this for every month of the year because we want to measure it. We want to track it. So make a copy, right? If you make a copy and you fill it out for the month of August, 
here are your goals. Go ahead and set measurable, attainable goals. Your goals should be a stretch, right? But with them being a stretch, you have to like break it down how you want to. I believe in breaking stuff down in 12 month increments. Like give me a month at a time so I can say, okay, this month I grew my account by 10%. Cool, I'm closer to my goal. This month I grew my account by 6%, a little bit less than last month, but cool, I'm still closer to my goal. I like to see month over month to see if there's a trend right? For those of you who trade, you know, in the winter months, the market moves differently. So your income might balance differently at that time, right? You know that there are holidays coming up. So your rank might fluctuate at that time, right? The point is just be very honest with yourself in the goals and things that you have, okay? Make sure you write everything down because we want to track it and keep, keep copies of it right? Keep a notebook. I have a little notebook where I keep track of everything, right? And then this is an example. So let's say your current rank is P150, right? But your goal is P1000. So right, right now you're at $150 a month. Your goal is $1,000 a month. You need $850 more to get to that mark, right? This is easy for you to track. Just look at your back office, see how many members are currently in your enrollment, right? If your goal is 30 members to hit P1000, if you're at P150 with eight members, you know you need 22 more members, right? To get to that 30. So stuff like this is easy for you to track. Just remember, for, for those of you who are inside an opportunity, Help your eight people that you already have back there get three people. And believe it or not, it's just that simple to get to Platinum 1000. You'll be there if you help your eight people get three people, right? It's that simple. So having a goal matters, but how you are trending towards that goal matters more. If you miss the goal date or amount, that's fine, right? We've got to stop beating up on ourselves when we only, only do this much, right? We didn't hit the goal. We only got to P600, right? We didn't get to Platinum 1000. But guess what? You're only $400 away from your goal now. Like, like I was saying earlier on the, li on the live, if your goal is to, to go a mile, but you only go an inch, celebrate that inch because you're closer to your goal than where you were before you got that inch, okay? So do me a favor and don't make the little things seem so insignificant because a lot of successful people don't have huge amounts of success. They have a lot of little successes to get them where they got, right? Like one of my favorite, favorite people um, is Denzel Washington. I love his movies, love his movies, love his movies, right? But he tells the story of him getting involved in the acting industry. And he was turned down for multiple roles before he got his first break. And his first break wasn't a big break. It was a musical he didn't even want to be in, but he needed the money, right? But it took for him to go past that first step to get finally get through an audition and get selected in order for him to start getting the roles that would eventually help him build his career, right? We have got to stop like making the small goals, the small achievements insignificant, okay? That's a really big thing for me, right? Remember to celebrate all of your milestones and successes, right? Now that you've started to track your progress, you can see your growth. Hitting the milestones is now more attainable. Tracking your progress is going to be infinitely more good for you moving forward. Now, this helps you get everything down on paper. You get you need to get the numbers out, okay? After you get the numbers out though, I'm gonna share, I shared this with you guys too. So after you get the numbers out, then you're gonna schedule your success, okay? So this document has seven days in it and this is 24 hours a day, broken down in 30 minute, 30 minute increments, okay? I need you to do me a favor. Make yourself, um, this is done weekly. So you need 52 of these. Make yourself 52 copies, okay? 
and you can go down here in the book and you can click copy to a new sheet okay and you can actually label them down here put all of the months of the year or the, the weeks in the year here if you want to okay and then fill it out what week of the month is this go ahead fill out your calendar um these for me are color coded I did not put the colors in because I'm leaving you guys room to put the colors in. But for me, me time, me time is pink. That, that's for me. So when I fill out my weekly schedule, anytime it's pink that I don't, I don't have my phone, right? Unless my baby's not at home. And if I do have my phone because my son's not at home, he's the only person whose ring will ring. I put my phone on do not disturb with an exception. It's like him, his grandmother, his father, whoever's house he's at, right? Those are the only people who can get through my phone when I'm, when I'm in the middle of my me time. And my me time might just be, be me sitting and meditating or sitting and watching TV because I don't watch TV often, like at all. But it might just be, it might be me cooking right? It might be me laying in the middle of my floor with my headphones on, listening to my favorite music. I love lo-fi music. So for me to take a brain break, it might be me laying in the middle of the floor with my headphones on for an hour just to have some me time, right? It might be me, like I, my team knows this and it might be weird, but it might not. I like to take one hour long showers. I like to just stand there in the water. My me time might be scheduled out as that shower right? So whatever yours is, go ahead and schedule it. If you have team meetings, if you have classes, if you have one-on-ones, um, mentorship calls, schedule your breaks. 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 Okay? Schedule time to not do anything in at least 30 minute increments, right? Because I have blocks. I do um, time blocking for me personally. Um, so I'll schedule one to two hours at a time because my brain just allows me to go for one or two hours and my days are not the same. So I would urge you to fill this out. You know what you do on Sunday. Like everybody on my team knows Sunday at noon, we are on a life study class with our brother Bashari, right? So this is blocked out, right? At least I schedule it at least until 1.30 because sometimes it's an hour and a half and I like to be able to have that extra time and not have anything run into it, right? And we have, y'all know on, um, on Saturdays, we have class at 5 p.m. That class runs at least until six. That time is blocked out for me, right? That's the consistency in my schedule. Everybody knows on Tuesdays, I do a call at three o'clock to four, right? From four to five, I go on a walk every Tuesday with my son, without my son, I go outside, okay? Unless it's raining, if it's raining, I do the stairs. I live on the 11th floor of my building, so I will walk down 11 flights and walk back up, right? That four o'clock time, that's my, my exercise time, but it's not strenuous exercise. I choose to do something that's easy for me to do that I will actually consistently do, but that's every Tuesday because my walk time is different on Wednesday, on Thursday, right? Y'all know on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we got class at nine. Those are consistencies in my schedule. So go ahead and fill this out um, and fill out the consistencies first and then make your copies. And then over here, you have habits that you are either trying to build or you are trying to continue to utilize habits that you've already built. Fill this out, right? I have a meditation time. And what you do is go ahead and color in the block, right? Color in the block. Where's my color at? Let's do, let's do blue, right? So for my meditations, I might put blues over here. And that's, my meditations are usually at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8, 8.30 usually 30 minutes. I do 30 minutes of affirmation. So let's say one, but I don't do the same thing every day. So it might not be Monday. Like for me, Tuesday is my, um, is my affirmation day. 
And then I go back Wednesday and I meditate at that block in the morning, right? I have specific time that I, I put out to study different things because I do so much, right? Because I do so much. I don't study at the same time and I don't study the same thing, right? I have scheduled time to read. I have been through the audio version of this book, right? I love Think and Grow Rich. I have been through the audio version, but I actually want to go through the book and I want to highlight in my, my copy of my book and I want to highlight the things that resonate with me. So I schedule 30 minutes a day to read and I schedule that every day. So I put that in my schedule, but it doesn't always fall in the same place because I have other things that go there, right? And on Sundays, I have like brain break time up until noon. So for literally on Sundays from what is it? Eight o'clock in the morning. When I get up, I usually get up at eight, like by default from eight o'clock in the morning until noon. I don't do it. That's my, my self-care brain break. I might do my nails, right? I might do my toes. I might do a facial, right? I do something. If I might make a really, really good breakfast and just enjoy a healthy breakfast. I might do food prep for my meal for Sunday because my meals are usually for Sunday and Monday, right? So I have all of that in here. So your weekly habits, your weekly chores, write them down. If you're saying, oh my God, I always feel like every time I get ready to do the laundry is so much laundry because you only do, I only do laundry once a month, okay? I do laundry once a month. Me and my son have enough towels, sheets, and clothes to wash once a month. But when we wash once a month, it's a two hour long ordeal for us at the laundromat because we take everything to the laundromat and do all at one time. And then we get home and we spend an additional hour or two putting up everything. So that's a four hour chunk once a month. That might not work for everybody. You might need to do a load every other day because you have a bigger family than I have, right? It's just me and my son here, right? You, you might want to like, I have um, really bad allergies, really bad allergies. So I vacuum every day, every single day. I have to vacuum every day, right? So for me, I have a specific time and I, it only takes me like 30 minutes to vacuum my whole little apartment because it's clean, you know? So schedule that, put other chores in. If you, your kids, your significant other alternate chores, write down the days that you're doing them and block them out. Like put the blocks in, right? And each week you're gonna have some must do tasks. Track it, write down your must do tasks. Write down the day that it is because you're gonna fill out your weeks up here. You're gonna fill this out, right? Write down the day, write down the time. Go ahead and schedule an alert, schedule an alarm. Use your smartphone. It does a lot of stuff for you. Use your smartphone, okay? Set these alerts. And honestly, my entire schedule, I only put it on this document because um, I was having a conversation with one of my teammates and, and she needed, we needed to have this conversation. And I found out that just because I use every app on my phone, like I only have apps on my phone that I actually use, right? Because I use every app on my phone does not mean other people use every app on their phone. Like some people don't use their calendar, but try it out. See if that works. If that doesn't work, um, you can use your Google calendar and you can have your Google calendar from your computer send notifications to your phone if you have an Android. Um let me see if I can find it. There is something else that I use for time management. Um, let's see. When I find the name of the app, I'll drop it on the bottom of the document for you guys. Um, but one of the things that helps with, um, with the, the to-do task, if it's something that you're trying, like a habit that you're trying to create, right? Go ahead and use the five-minute rule. I love the five minute rule, okay? The five minute rule is, is something to help you with consistency. If you have something that you're trying to learn to do consistently, or you have something that you don't like doing, right? Do it for five minutes. The reason why I'm saying five minutes is because if you don't like to read a book, go ahead and just read for five minutes. 
because doing that five minutes every day is going to help you finish the task. You're going to get through the whole book, right? You're going to like my, my challenge to my team was to write out 300 affirmations. I'm not saying sit for hours and figure out 300 affirmations. No, nah, take five minutes a day, write down a couple affirmations. And by the end of a week or two, you'll have 300, right? The thing is, is we've got to stop saying, like, like my mentor says, Coach Lawrence tells us, you don't keep saying that your plate is full. Your plate is full of what? Who put it there, right? Who put it there? Who put all the stuff on your plate? You did. If your plate is full, take something off of it, right? And when you look at your schedule like this and you block everything out, you'll actually start to see the time that you have available, okay? You'll start to see how much free time you have available to start implementing new habits, right? Start knocking out some of the chores. Start creating some consistency, right? And then what this little reminders over here people who respect you will respect your time people who value you will also value your time okay i need you to understand that if you have a schedule where you are trying to better yourself and you have scheduled time to do that and you've communicated with people that you are not available during those times you need to hold people accountable for respecting you and your time, okay? It's perfectly okay to say, I'm not available until 10.30. I have something to do at 10, until 10.30. And then at 10.30, I'm only available for an hour because I'm going to bed. I have to get up in the morning, right? It's perfectly okay to say that. And then if people, like, they give you the, well, let me know when you have more time. I'm not sure when I have more time. Let's just start with this, right? Because people will spin your wheels and waste your time. And if you are trying to be better for yourself, start to hold people accountable and hold yourself accountable for making people respect your time and respect you. It's a thing for me because we make ourselves readily available to everybody for everything sometimes because a lot of the people that gravitate towards this type of information are the people that everybody is leaning on, right? So when you take the time to fill out this schedule, make sure that you are using the schedule, okay? So you guys have a copy of this as well. I just wanna make sure that you have this. Um, I am going to open up for, where is my participants button? open up four questions, comments. Let me guys, let me know, um, like all participants can unmute themselves. There you go. Let me know if there's something that we can add to make this information better. Let me know if you have a takeaway. Go ahead and unmute. Just let me know, okay? It's an open forum. We are not shy here. I think organization is key for myself. Like my training got exponentially better and my ability to communicate my boundaries to my family and my uh, associates got much better when I'm like, okay, these are the non-negotiable things that I need to get accomplished in certain windows of time. Like mm -hmm. class, non-negotiable. My trading window, non-negotiable. My time with my business partner, non-negotiable. Sleep, non-negotiable. And then of course, there's a lot of other things I would really like to get done, but I, I don't get those, I don't put those on my calendar. I put my non-negotiables on my calendar. And then I have a list of priorities as far as if I can get to it, then I work on the other things. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, almost a year ago, you told me schedule your breaks in. And I was like, ah, never that. But now I'm scheduling my breaks in and it's immensely helping my mindset and my communication. So I think this is a really relevant call. And I'm a visual person, so it really helps to see it as why, well. Why so? Yeah. yeah, like scheduling your breaks is extremely important because they're like a lot of us work, 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 work. Like I know Manny does not sleep because he's always researching crypto. Mm -hmm. I know you do not sleep because you are always up doing something for the business, doing something for social media, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very important to give yourself time away from the computer, away from your electronic devices. 
like I actually schedule a dopamine detox for myself once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, For those of you who do not know what a dopamine detox is, dopamine is the chemical that your brain produces that is the feel good chemical, right? It's a chemical that you receive through things like instant gratification, instant gratification and social media, right? So once a month, I do not touch any like electronic devices with the exception of like from Friday night at nine o'clock when we have class, I log on until like I'm off of all electronic devices until Saturday at five. And that's only because I moderate the chats for my mentor. And I can't not moderate the chats for my mentor on those two calls. It's like, what is it? Like, what is it? Uh, Maybe two and a half hours total. So I'm not on like scrolling through social media or anything like that. But for those two and a half hours, I'm moderating the chat and then I'm done. And then I'm not back on electronic devices until I life study on Sunday because life study is a part of my personal development. And then from there, I'm back off, right? Back off of my electronic devices until it's like 6 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday because I have other priorities to get through. But that's one weekend a month for me, right? And it's important that I take that time to kind of build up on other skills, on other hobbies, on other habits that I need to take into consideration, right? That I need to do better at. So having that detox, having the time away from electronic devices gives me more time to do other things that are needed, right? So I'm a big proponent of scheduling your breaks, but schedule into like big breaks, right? I have a brain break on Saturday morning. I don't touch nothing, like not until it's time for for class. Sunday morning, I don't touch anything until it's time for life study. Those are my brain breaks because I spend so much time in front of the computer trading and building and all that stuff um, that I need that break away from electronic devices. It's healthier for me to be away from them. People don't understand that sitting in front of your computer at your desk all day is worse than smoking because you're not getting up, you're not getting any exercise. Half the time, we're not eating right when we're sitting here. Half the time, we're not even drinking enough fluid. Um, And let me pull that back up too. Let me pull this back up. So also on the top of here, I left you little check boxes every single day, okay? Just just click them. All you gotta do is click the little check boxes. There are eight of them here. It is recommended that you drink eight glasses of water a day. Okay, so I put these here after you drink one and a glass is like eight ounces, right? After you drink one, okay, just check the box. And the reason why I want you to do this is because maybe on average, you drink two bottles of water, but you drink coffee, you drink juices and things like that. But after you start seeing this so much, you're gonna see, okay, I could drink a little bit more. And then you're going to average out to three bottles. And then you're going to average out to four bottles. And then the pop, the caffeine, and the things that you want to get rid of because you're trying to live a healthier lifestyle, you're going to be able to fit more of those in and less of like the bad stuff, okay? So I did put like today's water intake on here too. Um, let me know like inside of whatever chat you can find me on because everybody found me in different places. Like some of you guys on Instagram, some guys on Facebook. Um, let me know if there's any other categories that you want me to add like this too. Because I might add one in here for healthy meals because my son and I eat one vegetarian meal a week and one vegan meal a week. Vegetarian and vegan diets are very different. When we go on a vegan day, it's usually we have some sort of salad day all day, like where we're eating um, fruit salads for breakfast and lunch. And then we're having like hearty, leafy green filled salads for dinner. And that's like our vegan day. Um, and give you, you need to give your body that break sometimes. So I'll, I might add in another row for that. But um, the floor is still open. Let me know what other feedback we have. Yeah, like I had to put that in Yolanda because I do good. I have, what is it, 16 or 24 ounce bottles of water that I try to go through. And I was trying to keep track of it. Hey, Cal. 
and I was trying to keep track of it. So like for me, writing stuff down really worked. I'm going to have to try that because I restart my water intake um, every day. <laughs> okay. Yep. I'm going to try that. Do you have a, um, a Samsung? Um, what I got now? I have an L LG now. L okay. LG. So look on your phone. I know Samsung has a fitness app that actually lets you track your water and it keeps track of it for you. So like yeah. it'll send you reminders and stuff. I love that app. I had I had that on I had one of those on here before, but it kept dinging me to drink water, so I took it off. But I'm gonna do much better. Yeah, <laughs> telling you to do the thing you said you wanted to do, so you turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna I gotta do better. I have to. It's okay, and it's like it's the small steps though. Like I'm saying. If you don't drink water on a regular basis, uh -uh. make your goal to go a week where you drink one bottle of water every day. Okay. Right? I and then when you go to the calendar and you schedule that break <laughs> that we talked about, right? If you schedule a break, let's say your first break is at 1030. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to put a reminder right there to drink some of your water. Right? Okay. Drink yep. a little bit. Then you got another break a couple hours later. Drink a little bit more just to get through that one bottle. Okay? Okay. That's my same problem, honestly, Yolanda. You know what helped me? Um, do you like sparkling water? Um, yeah, that's okay. So maybe having a, like water with a little zing in it or something like that will help you drink it faster. I'll try that. I've, I've, I've attempted lemon water. I've attempted the crystal lights. I'm just going to do it, though. Do me Maybe a favor. I'm... As soon uh -huh. as you wake up in the morning, start drinking water. Ooh, that's going to have my nope. stomach hurting. How? No, it's not. It'll, it's actually very good for you. As a, um, as a performer, you they tell you that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you need to do is drink water because if you think about it, you've been asleep for eight hours and your, vo your vocal cords have not gotten any type of anything. Yep. So you actually need to give your vocal cords water. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you kind of like groggy and all of that. If you literally yeah. just drink five ounces of water like you don't even got to do a whole eight just drink five ounces of water keep it by your bed so that you don't even have to get up like you just sit up drink your water and then do whatever you was about to do it really does so you can also try infused water too like i know you said you try lemon water but try like cucumber water strawberry water other types of infusions because maybe you don't like lemon because of the citrus but maybe you'll like something else don't go too crazy with the meal because there is a lot of caffeine in it but chrissy does love meal <laughs> that yeah, infusions are great. Wakanda water, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, and it's just Wakanda water. Yeah, but like, okay. you, if the first thing that you do, you have mm. a brand new bottle of water next to your bed in the morning, you are already starting to knock out that goal. Okay, starting in the morning. Yeah, just drink a sip. You know, starting and then, in the morning. Sip, right? I, I even bought like. 30, 40 hint, hint water. It was so, okay, but. So, what do you was, drink on a regular basis, though? Oh, Chardonnay. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Okay. Chardonnay. <laughs> okay. So, listen, I need you to drink more water. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to up here so that those that, like, my, uh, one of my accountability partners struggles with drinking water as well. Um, so I put this up here. All you're doing is checking the little box. And then by the end of the week, go back and look at your results. And, and that's that that box. track your progress. You are going to feel so much better when you can see your progress. Okay. Yes. Aside from that, your skin clear up and you lose weight, girl. Drink it. Right? I mean, all that. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I appreciate this. Um, these um, schedules you made out, Chris, Christy. No problem. I appreciate it. Very thorough. I need it bad in my life. <laughs> yeah, and this is like, this is one of the things, because people on the team don't think I sleep. Right? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but you don't though. But you do. You but you, I don't think you do. <laughs> See, like I actually sleep, but you don't need eight hours of sleep solid Mm-mm. today. So I will sleep for six hours, four hours, and then four. I have a scheduled nap in my like I have a two hour nap schedule on Tuesday. On Wednesdays, on Thursdays, I have a two hour That's good. Nap. Huh? Good. That's good. And that's like, so I can get the rest of my sleep in. Like, as long as my body is rested and I stretch, I do yoga, right? Because exercising heavy is not for me. I try it and then I get very upset because I'm in pain. So, <laughs> that's true. I, have, that's why I do the stairs. I have one day a week where I'm dedicated to doing the stairs. I have two other days where I try. Okay. <laughs> and I might not like the one day my goal is to get through all 11 flights. And my son kind of, my son and I, we made it a race, right? We made it kind of a challenge where we wanted to see if we could time ourselves walking all the way down and walking all the way back up. And we could start decreasing that time. We know it takes us 60 seconds to go down 11 flights of stairs, right? Mm -hmm. And we know with coming up the stairs, it takes us about 10 or 15 minutes now, where in the beginning, it took us like 25 minutes. Okay. So it's definitely something that you want to do to start to, to give yourself that pat on the back that you need to keep going. Because if you don't see your progress, you don't see where your successes are, then you don't mm-hmm. know you're, you're accomplishing anything. That's not the case. That is so true. So yes, track all of the little things. And that's literally why I put all 24 hours on that schedule. Okay. I actually do sleep, but I do, like I said, I do time blocking. So I'll block a one hour chunk of time to do one thing. And then I'll have a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute break. And then I'll block something else for maybe an hour and a half or two hours. And I get more done during the week doing that because like when I don't have a bedtime, I try to go to bed by 1 a.m. Okay, don't just mm. try to go to bed by 1 a.m. So for me, the last, like the last time I'm on a computer is usually around like 1230. I try to get off by 1230 to let my brain calm down, get away from the screen. And I might put on something that I've seen a thousand times on TV until mm. I get to the couch. I do not believe in sleeping on my couch. So I will get up and go in my bed. Right. Okay. So like, because I time block though, when my alarm goes off, I take off whatever hat I want. If I'm doing social media, the social media hat comes off. If it's time for me to do a Zoom, the Zoom hat comes on. And I have time also in my schedule to go back and complete things that I did not finish. Because if I schedule an hour for social media, but I actually was creative, I had some ideas, I'll make sure to jot down those ideas. And then whatever I don't get to, I'll go back to because I have time scheduled to go back. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. That's got to feel really good. It does, man. Like, that's why I said, like, y'all don't think I sleep. I get a lot of rest, though. Like, I actually, some days, there are two days during the week where I sleep, like, 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually had decided, I kind of un, un, involuntarily decided, but it's low-key been working for the last, like, 48 hours. I've been sleeping, like, at night, I've been sleeping, like, four or five hours. And then during the day, I've been taking naps and, like, it actually is working for me. Like I wake up with more energy. I feel like oh, wow. I can actually accomplish things. I, now, when I first first did it, I was a little groggy, but I told myself mm-hmm. like, okay, so every time I wake up, I'm gonna treat it like it's morning time. So I'm gonna still do my affirmations. I'm gonna still do the things that I do in the morning, so my body can get ready to do stuff. But once once I'm like over that little hump, then it's actually very very good for me. Like today, I took a whole nap and I woke up at. 4 30 and it feels so good y'all yep. like oh my gosh it feels so wow. good <laughs> and yeah. listen for those of you who do not know that is princess dayla she's the one who helped me with the document with the goals on it with the financial goals on it so shout out to awesome. no problem anything awesome. thank you 
Thank you. Yep. So listen, that's all I had. I really, really, really wanted to get this information out because when Dayla and I were talking about this, we were excited. Like I did the calendar, asked for some feedback. I think I asked Alana for some feedback, um, sent her a copy, sent Dayla a copy. Like to see it. Yolanda, did I send it to you too? Yes, ma'am. Yep. So to get some feedback, and I was excited to get this information out to people. A lot of people don't know about Mint, the app that I showed you guys. Uh -huh shows you like all of the financial stuff that tracks everything that like I legit can tear my credit apart and it takes me six months to get it back to where I want it and that's like 730 750-ish somewhere around there so and that's because I can see everything I know where the things are that I messed up I know what my debt to income ratio is I know how to like um you pay your bills in like super payments like after you pay something else off, you don't put that money back into your budget. You now put it back that into the payment into another payment so that you're adding yeah. money more. So you can pay things off faster that way. And I do that and it usually takes me six months. I when I tell y'all, I ripped my credit. I think the lowest I dropped my credit score was like 420. And then got it back up to 750 in six mm -hmm. months. Okay. Okay. Like you, you're very disciplined. You put yourself on a budget, blah, blah, blah. Like put down your groceries and all of that in there too and try to stick to that budget. Um, one of the things that I do also is, and I'll send you guys a link if y'all want it. I'm a part of something called National Consumer Panel. National Consumer Panel pays you to shop and it, they don't pay you to shop at specific places. I go to the grocery store. I scan the things that I, I purchased at the grocery store and then they give me points. I use all of my points to get Amazon gift cards. I actually paid for my son's entire Christmas one year with Amazon gift cards. Nice. Like, so I'll send y'all that information too if y'all want it. Um, yes, of course. Listen, I like that. Like, like um, on my YouTube channel, I have a video that tells y'all the top five ways that you can earn free cryptocurrency. One yep. of the things that I like is Lolly. Yep. The Lolly website pays you in Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I just bought some books. DoorDash, Postmates. If you order from like regular stuff like that and you order it through your Lolly account, the the reimbursements are small increments of Bitcoin. Yep. Who to thunk it, right? So it's it's plenty of information out there. I'll drop some more stuff. Um, like I said, I wanted to record this. I'll take a look at it later and I'll see um, if, if we can upload it to YouTube just so that it's there for you guys to watch again, okay? Yes, absolutely. You said you keep a salt shaker by your bedside or oh, beside your computer to try to get in the habit of putting a small bit in the palm of your hand several times a day. Oh, okay. So it helps you drink more water, Ken? That's different. Because like, yeah, it would make you thirsty. But then what about your blood pressure, Ken? What about your blood pressure? I am concerned for your blood pressure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, that's it, guys. That's all I wanted. I wanted to share this information with y'all because I'm like, I, I want to see people succeed no matter what, no matter what you are doing. Like I said, this call was not specifically for people on my team. It was for anybody who wanted to come. Um, but these are just some of the things that I've used over time that have helped me get some of the success that I'm looking for. Like I was saying on my live, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm definitely ahead of where I was. And it's taking steps like this that helped me to get there. So I just wanted to share what I have with you guys, okay? Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Uh All right. Thank you. Thank you.